So in this video, we are going to be looking at unleashing our innermost strength. Yes, it's time to look how Mithras deals with magic. My name's Inwills and welcome to the In Crowd. As always, if you are enjoying these videos, then please like, comment and subscribe. Not only will you get notifications when the next video becomes available, but you will also be supporting this channel and my dream. Uh, before we get down to the nitty gritty of magic, let's remind ourselves of some basic concepts within Mithras. Remember, it is a skill based system which has no classes, so everyone actually has the potential to learn magic if they are prepared to invest the time and energy into it. If you're still befuddled about what Mithras is, then I recommend that you check out my overview video, which will be hovering around up there in some card-like form. Okay, without further ado, on to mag magic. Are you ready? Let's start casting. So Mithras has a very adaptable magical system. There are some basic rules within the rule book, but all these can be adapted and changed and altered to suit the sort of campaign that you want. Now, in the next video, I'll be giving you an insight into how we have adapted and implemented this system by giving you some insight into how we deal with magic in our campaign. So first up, what actually fuels the magical spells in Mithras? Well, that would be magic points. Now, the number of these available to the character is actually based on their power score. The higher their power, the more magic points they have. Now, it's up to you within your campaign about how the um, magic users receive their magic points. For example, it could be just from their innermost self and the magic points are generated because they are magical. Other uh, options include from divine beings, similar to clerics, how they will get their power. And Mithras gives a range of options for you to actually choose from or to create your own. Um, some of the others available are actually include sacrifices, <clears throat> actually sacrificing animals to fuel your magic or destruction, destroying certain crystals, etc. Or even to going to certain locations, certain ley lines where you can absorb the magic that's there and even consumption, i.e. you have to take some kind of um, potion or some kind of food that will actually give you magic points to fuel your spells with. Now, these magic points can return in a variety of ways. For example, in a very rich campaign, you might get one magic point back per hour. In less magic rich, rich campaigns, it might be one magic point per week. Or it could be almost like a D&D 5th edition rule that, uh, you know, as you take a long rest, you get your magic points back. Um, also, with the, the clerics, the thesis of the uh, Mithra system, they might have to perform acts of worship to actually get them back. And basically, it's up to you and your players to create that yourself. The other thing that is very important is what happens when your magic points reduce to zero. Now, there's quite a lot of options available in the rule book relating to this. It, they're all on page 117 if you want to have a look. Um, the one that we tend to use is that when the magic users get down to zero magic point, they have to make a willpower check. And if they succeed in that, then they stay conscious. If not, they're out for the count. So how do players cast magic? Well, each sort of like discipline of magic has certain skills and I'll talk about these more when we look at the disciplines. However, basically what happens is that the player has a skill in casting that magic. They then roll a D100, a percentile dice, and if they score below that percentage of the skill, then the spell comes off. 
if the dice go higher than that, then the spell fails. And if you fumble it, it might fail and you might lose magic points. Of course, if you get a crit roll, then the chances are the spell will come off and you lose no magic points at all. Now, just to make magic a little bit easier, we do have a rule that says that you're allowed to take minutes rather than seconds. And if you take minutes to cast a spell, then the difficulty drops from a standard roll to an easy roll. Of course, if you want to take hours, it will drop once again to a very easy roll. Yes, and in combat or certain environmental conditions or even under the effect of fatigue, the dice roll, the difficulty can get hard or very hard or even formidable. So the number of spells a character starts off with is generally based on their initial skill within a discipline. Although this can be changed by the campaign itself, but generally the, the higher your um, skill level, the more spells you can actually receive. After that, spells need to be learnt via experience rolls, which I'll talk about in another video. Plus, you have to pay for your training. And this is why many magic users or spellcasters actually belong to orders. And again, I'll mention these at the end of the video, but another video is probably needed to explain them all in full. So now we know how we fuel our spells and how many we might get, what sort of spells can you cast in Mithras? Well, the game is actually set up to give five disciplines of magic and each of these disciplines are quite separate and distinct from each other. They are folk magic, animists, sorcerers, theists and mysticists. Now, what I'm going to do is explain each one of these in um, succession. So if you're waiting for a favorite one, then you might have to skip through. So first up, folk magic. Now this deals with the everyday common magic within any campaign. The spells are very simple, they're generally quick to cast, and they're widely available. And some of them can be quite effective. Now, folk magic um, has one skill called folk, folk magic, which is used to see whether or not a spell comes off and where, whether or not it's been cast successfully. So examples of spells within this discipline include things like blade sharp, which when you touch a weapon, it increases the um, percentage um, to hit of that weapon or the damage, or befuddle, which confuses people, calm, which relaxes animals, frostbite, and even the attack spell disruption. Now the animists deal with spirits. Uh, now these can range from friendly ancestor spirits who provide information and knowledge from the past or vengeful bane and haunting spirits. Now, when you think of a, an animist, you tend to think of the typical shaman, you know, falling into trances and entering the spirit world and having various totems of power festooned around their body. Spirits can be used to enhance the character's um, attribute scores or attack the weak-minded. The two associated skills with Animus are trance and binding, and these are used to capture spirits and to bind them to totems for future use. These skills also form the basis of combat should the Animist wish to venture onto the spirit plane. So next up, sorcery. Now this is the arcane magic, which is both powerful and demanding. Characters with this discipline of magic can shape their magic in order to, for example, increase the range of the spell or the intensity of the spell or to affect more than one target or even to shape the spells to cast two spells simultaneously, i.e to summon something to a person towards them while attacking them with a rack spell, which is a basic damage spell. Their two skills are invocation, and that's used to cast the spell, and shaping, which allows them to manipulate and alter spells. Sorcerers are extremely powerful, and they have spells such as summon, and portal, rack, 
heal and diminish characteristic. The latter is the equivalent of the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, power word, kill. Next up, the Thesists. Now these are the clerics of Mithras. They actually gain their spells called miracles from divine beings, from gods and goddesses. They have a separate casting pool um, called their devotion pool and this is actually charged up by taking points from their magic points and putting them into their devotion pool and it's this devotion pool that they use to perform their miracles now the thesis rely on two skills exhort which is their casting skill and devotion yes their devotion to their god now miracles are limited to various ranks of thesis but they can be both destructive and helpful so miracles include all the heals turning into beast form, clearing the skies of weather, lightning and the deadly heart seizure. And finally, the mystics. Now within this discipline, there are no spells, but there are talents and abilities that the mystics can use to enhance their body and mind, which change them from a average character to something that can be quite formidable. Now they are rather like the stereotypical monks of any fantasy setting apart from the fact that unless defined by a campaign they're not restricted to use certain weapons or to wear robes. Now their two skills are meditation and the implementation skill, the role, the skill that they roll, mysticism. Now Talents can range within this order, but they include things like arrow cut. Yep, that does exactly what it says. It allows them to knock arrows out the air, night sense and slow heart rate. And within the enhancing abilities, they allow them to increase the number of action points they get or their damage modifiers or even their healing rates. Now, at this point, you might be thinking that we've got all these first beginning characters walking around with heart seizure and lightning bolts. However, that's not how it works in Mithras. There's no set rules to how to do magic in your campaign, but there are some recommendations and these allow the magic to be balanced. So initially there is the restricting um, power of the skill. For example, if somebody's only got 35% in folk magic, then those spells are not going to come off that often. In a similar way, the folk magic spell also determines how many spells a character can learn, just the same as the meditation's um, ability of mystics allow them to say how many um, abilities or talents they can have. So there are some restrictions there. The other system that comes into um, existence now within campaigns are the orders. Now, what happens there, and I will do a future video on orders and cults and guilds, etc., and how they support the players. But essentially, if we take the thesis, for example, the clerics, they have certain orders that they belong to, a church, a worshipping group to a divine being. Now, what happens here is that each rank within that order is allowed access to certain spells, while others lower down are not allowed access to the spells at all. Therefore, the great resurrect spell, which is apparent and used in Mithras, is only castable by high priests or priestesses. Now, in order to become a high priest, you have to spend several years, well, decades within the order and also have gained levels of certain skills way up, very close to 100. But I'll talk more about orders and guilds in a later video. So, apart from actually giving you a whole range of spells descriptions, that's magic basically done. But in order to give you some examples of seeing the system in action, then in the next video, I'm going to focus on how we, i.e. the players and myself, use magic within our current campaign world, including some of the orders that we have in existence within Odess. 
So if you're interested in, in seeing that, then please like, comment and subscribe and press that bell for a notification when the next video is uploaded. Finally, as always, if you have any questions or suggestions, then please add them in the comments below and I will try to answer them. I really do appreciate your interaction with the channel. And once again, thank you so much for supporting the channel and my dream. Until next time, I would just like to say to each and every one of you, please remember to be who you are and say what you think, because the people who ma mind don't matter and the people who matter don't mind. Have fun and I'll catch you all later. And until then, happy role playing. See ya. Bye. She almost like holds out her finger and she says, you are the ones, 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 ones. Okay. Maybe well, she's not trying to kill us. What? What are we the one ones of? You destroyed us, 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 us. You left us here to die, 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 die. You never came back, 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 back. You left us to die, die. Jason's like, I only just met these guys. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it was us. Uh, is she pointing at Ben? No, she's pointing at you. And she says, And now, 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 now. You will pay, 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 pay. And she comes towards you and dissipates. And then all of a sudden, you notice that Bartleby collapses um, to the floor. He's, he doesn't seem to be unconscious. He seems to be sort of like as if he's in some kind of dream. And he, he seems to be... Um, turning and tossing on the ground and he seems to be muttering um to himself and um almost like talking and um murmuring and he, you're not too sure what what's happening but he just seems to be um rolling about on the floor uh, what was going to quickly go up to him and sort of like kneel down and try to shake him yeah you you kneel down and try to shake him and you notice that his eyes are completely rolled back um in in, in his um in his head and um he, he just he, the color seems to have drained um out out of his um face um Bartleby, you seem to be walking in in street in a street and you seem to be in Lindo. And you just seem to be walking down a street in Lindo. Is it a familiar street or one that feels comfortable? Well, one that feels um, um, very comfortable. It seems very familiar to you. Yes, guys, what would you like to be doing? This is about religion, is this? It's got to be. Gulliver's going to... Um... Look up at Hengis. He's going to turn, look up at Hengis, and he's going to say, Hengis, check the house! Hengis is going to... And then Gulliver wants to cast a spell. Hengis is going to nod um, and, and, and move up towards the door of the house. Okay. Um, uh, Bartaby, you, you seem to be walking down this street... And uh, you, you, you sort of like look around and you, you look down and you're, you see that your hands are absolutely perfect. They are absolutely perfect. They are so flexible and agile. And you're, you're amazed uh, as you can feel your fingers like this. Um, cast your spell, yeah. Okay, so I don't know whether or not this is going to work, but I want to cast Disruption on him. Okay, yeah, go. Um, I'm 
thing. So that's the. Yeah, can you pop the thing in? Yeah. Commonly employed to drive off. Yeah, so he just does damage, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and he has a resist. Doesn't it? Yeah. Against endurance, yeah. Yeah, um, Bartby, would you like to roll your endurance resist? I would love to. I've been power leveling my endurance. Uh, where everything's <laughs> correct. Ow. Do you wish to roll a point of luck and re roll it? Um, yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll throw a little po point of luck in there. Um, re rolling. Big money, big money. Um,. <laughs> Okay, um, 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 you take, roll, roll your damage to a random location, um, Gulliver. So the um, hit location would be... Oh, nicely to the chest. Yes, yes thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Not that fabled right arm again. Um, two points of damage to your chest. And that ignores armor, yeah? <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, it ignores armor. Excellent. 